I've been asked for United Lutheran Seminary to review the work of Kelly Brown Douglas, The Roots of the Black Jesus, and in doing so, to offer commentary which will provide a question for my future ministry. Now, before I do this, I want to emphasize several points. First, I do not claim to be a true historian of the antebellum South, nor am I in a position to offer any strong historical critiques of Douglas's work. However, as a child, I was obsessed with the American Civil War, and I have read extensively the writings of Martin Luther King Jr. as a lover of his work. I also, too, am a Caucasian, white, American, uh, middle-class Christian, and therefore there are limitations to my perspective, and I am aware of this, and I want to make sure that I do not claim to be speaking here as an expert in anything, simply as a student sitting at the feet of giants, studying the past so that I can better learn to serve the community to which I will be appointed. It is easy to speak from an armchair. It is hard to walk alongside those who are suffering and to understand their suffering and realize the limits to one's own understanding. I realize that there are limits to my own. And for that, I want to make sure before I begin to discuss these weighty and sensitive matters that I am approaching this with the proper reverence and care. So, Kelly Douglas offers a thesis. Her thesis begins by juxtaposing the images of the so-called, I use the term so-called here respectfully, it's simply to emphasize that I am speaking in quotation marks, the so-called black Jesus, which is identified with the earthly liberator Jesus, depicted in the Synoptic Gospels, as interpreted by Douglas, the Jesus who suffers on the cross, triumphs victoriously the third day as a kind of second Moses, who is leading uh, the oppressed into freedom, here and now, with the so-called, in quotation marks, white Jesus, who is, in Douglas's view, the religious incarnate God, distant, remote, hierarchical, hegemonic, depicted figure imposed upon the African-American psyche uh, around the time of the colonization of the Americas. This thesis of the black versus white Jesus in Douglas's view, hinges upon different interpretations of the figure who is central to our faith, and supposedly cherry-picks different pieces of the Jesus of Scripture. Supposedly, the black Jesus of the slavery movement, according to Douglas, is in the second Moses figure, seen as a stand-in for all the collective's personal suffering and wrongful treatment of the African-American community under the weight of abuse through the antebellum period through to civil rights and is a uniquely ethnic voice in that particular sense, leading some figures, not all of them, but some figures to actually question whether Jesus was historically uh, black this is not the primary point of view, as Douglas points out, of many leaders within the movement, but some voices seem to be at least implying that. On the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, we see a cherry-picked white Jesus in Douglas's view, who, as I said, is employed by the slaveholding elites and by uh, supposedly... Um, malevolent clergy who are depicting a Jesus who is doing nothing at all with one's personal freedom or quest for one's rights in, in this life, but only talking about the hereafter, a very platonic Jesus, Jesus up there, we down here. Uh, even going so far as to quote the Archbishop of London in the 18th century saying that Christianity has nothing to do with changing the civil order of the world today. And also to quoting baptismal rites on Douglas's view of those who were 
asked to affirm before they were baptized that the that they were only looking for freedom in the hereafter and not freedom from their slavery right now. So these are some eye-opening quotation marks and some eye-opening uh, examples of oppression that occurred throughout American history and to some extent still occurs. Uh, I am sure that there are churches even to this day, even in the United States, that horrendously misrepresent Jesus as merely the savior of one's soul while ignoring Jesus' promise to be with his disciples to empower them to bring about God's healing and God's love and reconciliation on the earth. I am sure that is still true in many churches today. Maybe not in the exact same form as horrendously as depicted here, but certainly uh, we can see some of these trends still alive and well. However, I have some severe problems, some grave problems with creating a schizophrenic Jesus who is in some sense black and in some sense white and turning the incarnate God who was specifically incarnate as a Jewish male 2000 years ago into a puppet, no matter how well-intentioned either for hegemonic control of an ethnic community abusively, as in the case of the so-called white Jesus, or into uh, a figure in the black power movement in the 1960s. And it's, I think most egregious levels, uh, leading people to believe that Jesus is some, uh, warrior only for that specific cause. Because these interpretations ignore the holistic portrait of the scriptural Jesus of whom Paul in an errant, holy, divinely God breathed scripture states is all and in all for in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for Christ is all in all. And of course, Paul doesn't mean that males and females don't exist anymore. And it doesn't mean that there aren't deep social divides, which are unjust between slave and free. And Christ certainly uh, isn't saying that there isn't a distinction between good ethnic backgrounds. In fact, in my own tradition, uh, previously in Roman Catholicism, where Mary was depicted as a, a Mexican woman in Our Lady of Guadalupe and as an Irish lady in Our Lady of Knock and as a culturally Indian woman in a uniquely Indian apparition in the subcontinent, I think it's uh, under the title of Our Lady of, of Good Hope, uh, to whom I think Mother Teresa of Calcutta had a deep devotion. You know, it, it, it is clear that we approach Jesus through our ethnic lenses and our cultural lenses. There's nothing wrong with that. We ought to. In that sense, Jesus is black and is Irish and is Italian and is those things because Christ is alive in us and working through us. However, however, with all those layers painted on, is it possible that we lose sight of the poor, itinerant Jewish rabbi living under Roman oppression in a unique social and political situation? And that, and that we lose that unique particularity. And that we also equally miss the unique inclusivity of a Jesus who is transcending these social ethnic barriers by the radical behavior of open table fellowship, which he carried out with the tax collectors, prostitutes, disenfranchised, and which Paul is carrying out in his ministry and the epistles. I found it interesting that uh, although obviously Paul had been abused by the uh, so-called advocates of the white Jesus in Douglas's work, uh, that really at the end of the day, uh, Paul offers our earliest strata about the so-called historical Jesus. I personally, as everyone knows from my recordings, and as uh, what you and many others will know, I personally believe that the scriptural image of Jesus is the historical Jesus. I think that we can and should 
rely on scripture and that it is an accurate representation. But, you know, let, let's take a historical critical approach for a moment. Scholars will say, well, our early strata is Paul and those early Pauline creeds that depict Jesus as divine, fully divine. Though he was in the form of God, Philippians 2, Colossians 1, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation by whom all things were made, be they thrones, principalities, and powers. And yet at the same time is also too the Jesus who Paul worships, worships who transcends the ethnic, the social categories of his present time and of our own time. So in, in this way, I, I'm worried that we are reducing Jesus by either isolating him uh, to a specific uh, representation um, this doesn't mean, and I want to clarify this, this does not mean that there is no room for a feminist Christology or an African uh, Christology or for a specific uh, Christology based off of someone's marginalized experience. Certainly not. There is room for this because clearly Christ makes room for this by indwelling us, by becoming a uh, one with us, as we are members of his body, surely there is room for this theology. It's, it's beautiful. However, and it's a strong however on my point, uh, and I say this sensitively, knowing that I, I have not walked through other people's circumstances, but it makes for bad systematic theology. If one only focuses on the earthly ministry or the incarnation and tries to draw a wedge as Douglas seems to be doing. And if one forgets uh, the, perhaps the whole scriptural Jesus, because one wants to cling on to a specific part that fits one's criteria. And perhaps the church has historically done this. I mean, maybe we need to repent in certain areas and really grapple with the whole scriptural Jesus. But as fully divine and fully human, Christ is bigger than a lot of our human boxes. And we need to understand that. I need to grow an understanding of that. So I, I say to Douglas and her thesis, it's very interesting. And I am I'm glad that the, uh, in quotation marks, black Jesus and in quotation marks, white Jesus has played uh, a significant role to speak to African-American communities in their fight against oppression. However, I don't want to ever see our Jesus, to whom we worship, and my Jesus, whom I worship, and the Jesus of Scripture, who I all hope, who, who I hope we all uh, would long to be the same <laughs> Jesus. I don't want our Lord and our Savior to be reduced. Um, to a specific political movement and time uh, in so much as he is made only a social justice warrior and not the incarnate son of God who socially changes the entire world by redeeming us from the curse of sin and death and the effects of curse of that curse in the political and social orders in which we live. So a very nuanced critique of Douglas's thesis on my end. And I hope that it's warmly received and I'm open to criticism as well. I'm only a student and uh, certainly have much to learn on my end. One question which I would raise is, um, how could I in my ministry uh, offer a balanced portrait of that earthly ministry of Jesus and the divine incarnate son of God image that um, Douglas seems to see is so divided? And how can I create a community that is welcoming of the, these unique ethnic understandings of the person of the Son of God in a way that is inclusive, loving, and open? Uh, definitely very good questions which weigh on my heart because it'd be easy to emphasize the parts of Christ that I fixate on, but you know, to make sure that the holistic portrait of our Lord is being depicted to the whole congregation. All right, looking forward to catching up soon and hope that these reflections have been helpful.